Okay, we're going to be looking at this packet today. We're calling this the 7.1 and 7.2 packet. Um, we picked it up after the test. I want to flip and we're going to do most of our work today together on page four. So if you turn to page four with me, we should be looking at this page. Okay, and we're going to fill in these vocab words. So in section 7.1, we talk about vertical angles and adjacent angles, okay? So we're gonna write down these definitions and go over some examples. A vertical angle, well, vertical angles, they're always, they come in a pair. So really it would be a pair of vertical angles and those are always tip to tip, right? So the way we draw vertical angles is two crossing lines, like a big X. And this angle here and this angle here, the two angles that are across from each other, tip to tip there, those would be called vertical angles. I could also say that these red angles are another pair of vertical angles. They're across from each other, tip to tip, this way. Okay, so vertical angles, the picture is always gonna be a big X, right? Crisscrossing lines. It's important to note that with vertical angles, they're the ones that are directly across from each other, and they have to be the same size. They're always the same size, right? When I take these two angles, they're the same size, and these two red angles are the same size, okay? And the word for that, which we're gonna add onto our paper right now, the word in geometry that we use for exactly the same size or exactly the same measurement is congruent. So I'm gonna say exactly the same size or measure, okay? So that's a, another vocab word that we're gonna add here, congruent. And it has a symbol that goes with it. The symbol for congruent is actually an equal sign with a squiggle on top. So whenever you see that, that means congruent, same exact size or measure, okay? So vertical angles are congruent. Right? Anytime you see vertical angles, they are going to be congruent. All right, and then the other word in this section is adjacent angles. We're gonna write down the definition. Adjacent angles are next to each other and they share a side or a wall, okay? And they can be any different size. Being adjacent just means they're next to each other, it has nothing to do with their measurement, okay? So adjacent angles could be um, like this, right? I have an angle here and an angle here. They're next to each other and they share this red wall or this red side down the middle. So though, that's an example of adjacent angles. They might be the same size. They might be totally different sizes. They may add up to something special. They might not. Okay, so I'm going to quickly go through some examples of constructing some different angles. Pause where you need to so that everybody can catch up. But like we said yesterday, you always start with a line. So I'm gonna use my protractor to make a line. And I'm gonna put a vertical angle on it. And this first one says, construct a pair of vertical angles where one angle is 80 degrees. So I need to draw 80 degrees. I take the whole of my protractor, right? Right here where my pen is. And I line that up with my vertex and the line on my protractor and the line on the paper overlap. And I find 80 degrees. Well, decide which way you want your angle to open. I have a little bit more room this way. I'm gonna move it down here. So I'm gonna start at zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 would be here. And I just make a mark on my paper, okay? And then I pick my protractor back up and use the ruler side to connect my vertex and that dot I just made. Okay, now I'm gonna leave it here. Since I'm making vertical angles, I want them to actually be crisscrossing lines, make a giant X, so I end up with that. Okay, so the angle I just measured is here. This is 80 degrees. Well, the vertical angle that goes with it, directly across, right, tip to tip, is also 80 degrees. And then we actually also know, I'm gonna put this back up, we know that any straight line, you guys already know that a straight line is 180 degrees. So this one here, the adjacent angle, right?
right? These two angles are adjacent because they share this side. And those two adjacent angles have to add up to 180, so I actually know what that one is. And the vertical angle across from that is also 100. So I can actually fill in all the angles of that picture. All right. Let's do another one here. So a pair of vertical angles where one angle is 80 and one is 130. Start with a line, doesn't really matter. Put a vertex on it. I should have spaced it out better, but that's okay. Pick your protractor back up and line it up. Decide which way you want your angle to measure and start at zero. So I'm gonna go all the way over to here, find 130 and put a mark on your paper. Move your protractor out of the way. Use the ruler edge to make a straight line. Okay, because I want vertical angles, I'm gonna go all the way through so that I have two crisscrossing lines and then label the angle that I just made. Okay, the one across from it is the other half of the pair. It should be like that. Okay. All right, pause if you need to. I'm gonna keep going. Construct a pair of adjacent angles, so now this just means they share a side, where one angle is 70 degrees. Okay, let's start by just making a 70 degree angle. So step one, draw a line. Step two, put a vertex on it. Pick up my protractor and line everything up again. Decide I, which way I want my angle to open a little straighter for you guys and start at zero and count up to 70 and make a mark on my paper use the ruler edge of my protractor to make a straight line there and label the angle I just drew okay all right well I need another angle next to it so you could be lazy and you could just use this angle we already have you could draw any other angle next to the one we've already got. Okay, we just need two angles that share a side. So here I have these two angles next to each other sharing this side. And because mine make a straight line, I know that mine add up to 180 degrees. You could put any other angle next to it that you want. All right, here, let's do our last one. Pause wherever you need to to make sure everybody can catch up and get these drawn. There's my line. Put a vertex, measure 100 degrees, make a dot, and then a straight line. All right, so I'm gonna label my 100 degrees. Again, I could be lazy. I could just use this angle that's already next to it if you want, or you can draw any other angle next to it as long as they share a side. So my two angles share that highlighted side and I put the measures of both of them in there, okay? So we're gonna look at a couple um, more example problems down here. All right, you'll notice here that I have vertical angles, right? I have an angle and the one directly across from it, and those have to be congruent. So I'm gonna label these as vertical and congruent. You could either do the symbol or kind of abbreviate it like C-O-N-G sometimes I use. All right, if this is 61 degrees, then the vertical angle across from it also has to be 61 degrees. And anytime you see a straight line, like notice these two adjacent angles next to each other make a straight line, right? I'm lining it up here with my ruler edge. If they make a straight line, I know they have to add up to 180. So 61 plus, I could do 180 minus 61, and I get 119. So this has to be 119. And, right, that's that green one here. I have the other green angle across from it. And these two are vertical angles with each other, so they have to match 119. All right, I'll do one more of those. So here I have 34. Well, the one directly across from it has to be its vertical angle pair, right? So those are the same. And then anytime you see a straight line, then these two angles 
have to add up to 180. So I could do 180 minus 34 to see what's left, and I get 146 here. Well, then this vertical angle is also 146. Okay, so you can come back down and finish these. In fact, maybe pause, let everybody catch up and finish these ones, and then we'll come over here and talk about these too. Okay, because I have angles that are across from each other, tip to tip, these are vertical angles. And we know that vertical angles are always congruent. So whatever this measure is, it has to be exactly the same as this. So when I set up an equation to solve for this x, I know that this 7x minus 4 is equal to 77. Well, now I just have an equation. It's a two-step equation to get x by itself, and then I'll know how big this angle is. Okay, so we use what we did in chapter 3 to get x by itself, right? Inverse operations to cancel things out. Do the same thing on both sides. So I, I do plus 4 plus 4, bring down my 7x. 77 plus 4 is 81. Divide by 7, divide by 7. And I get that x is equal to, what? type that into your calculator. I get 11.6. I'll do one more of those here. So I recognize that I have two angles across from each other tip to tip, so these have to be equal to each other. They're the exact same measurement, they're congruent. So 103 is equal to 8x minus 9. Draw my line and I'm trying to solve for x to figure out what x would be, so plus 9, plus 9. Cross out what cancels, bring everything down and I get 112, divide by 8, divide by 8, and I get x is equal to 14. Okay? So this bottom part of this page is the next section. That'll make more sense after you watch the next video, but we're going to move on, and I want to show you these pictures here. Okay? Um, <clears throat> So this is the one we talked about today. When I have these angles that are across from each other, tip to tip, we know that they are congruent, right? So I would say that this angle, right, if I call this angle B and angle, angle A and angle B, I would know that angle A has to be equal to angle B, and I could use that to help me find the missing angles in a picture, okay? We're going to get into this more tomorrow, but I also want to point out, anytime you see a picture like this, that makes a right angle, and I would know that these two angles, angle A and angle B, would add up to 90 degrees, right? Those two angles make a right angle, and every right angle is 90 degrees. So if I took those two angles, add them together, would equal 90. And we already talked about how every straight line, right? Anytime you see a straight line, that would be 180 degrees. So anytime you see a picture like this, these two angles would add up, so I'll say A plus B here, add up and equal 180 degrees. So we're going to get into that more um, over the next day or two. What I do want to show you is page 6. Okay, so so far we've talked about adjacent, vertical, and congruent. So kind of for this page and the rest of the packet, I want you to be able to label any pictures where you see adjacent angles, vertical angles, or congruent angles, okay? So, for example, these angles share a side, so I have adjacent angles, and I'm going to put that vocab word wherever I see adjacent angles. Oh, these two angles share a side, so I'm going to say adjacent angles there. Um, here I have angles across from each other tip to tip, so these are vertical angles. And every time I have vertical angles, I know they're also congruent, right? So you're going to label all the pictures on this page, the next page, right, with the proper vocab. So far, we know adjacent, vertical, and congruent, okay? And then if you know what the equation is, you'll put the equation next to the pictures to help you kind of find what the values would be. So go back to these examples that we did here on page four, all right? And you can keep working through this packet, okay? Drawing any angles with the protractor while you have them, drawing angles here, drawing angles here. You're going to do everything you can in the rest of the packet, okay?